What's up guys and welcome back to On The Brick with another custom LEGO review. Today, I have for you a set that I enjoyed way more than I thought I would. This is the Droid Tri-Fighter from Thomas Jenkins. You can of course find the instructions at Brick Vault, or if you want to build a version of your own, then check out the link down below to my web store, on thebrick.fun, where you can buy your own part kit. This custom build contains 426 pieces and sits at 7 inches long, 5 inches wide, and 5 5 inches high. I obviously do not have the stand for this, so it'll obviously be higher if you do. The Droid Tri-Fighter was a starfighter utilized by the CIS during the Clone Wars, and you can even briefly see it in Revenge of the Sith. I'm sure it's in here somewhere. There it is. Okay, just kidding, I know that you can actually see them. Apparently, it was the smallest ship out of both factions in the Clone Wars, but was heavily armed and possessed an advanced droid brain. This gave it an advantage over organic pilots, and its heavy armament made it a foe to be reckoned with. It's not too difficult to see where this thing got its name from, as its unique shape is something that I'm sure was a challenge to recreate in LEGO form. Going into this, I expected the build to be a little repetitive and probably a little fragile. But honestly, to me, this is a great example, or if not the example, of what a challenging build should be. While there were absolutely challenging aspects of this build and areas that I did have to try more than once, at no point was I frustrated or at no point did the set fall apart on me. Once you get this thing together, with the exception of some small pieces you'll see throughout the video, it really holds together very well. I also just realized that these eyes are a little too high, so let me go ahead and fix them. There are a lot of very interesting pieces used throughout this build and an equal amount of techniques used. Some of them are a little questionable, but we'll talk about it when we get there. The three sides of the Tri-Fighter are all pretty much identical, but I love the detail they still put into this. It's tiled off on the top, they do have some extra details on there, and they did a great job getting all the curves of this despite the limitations of LEGO. The one issue you may encounter is what I'm fidgeting with on the right side there. This piece just kept popping out for some reason, and as I was messing with it, you could see that the whole black tube came out of its area there. So, while you don't need to be super super extra careful while handling this, make sure you do handle it with a little bit of care. But as you can see, I can still shake it around a little bit and it'll be fine. When you're building this, you do actually start with the center area and then build the outer curves because of course you would, that just makes the most sense. And as I've said, these curves are repetitive, but I do like how they do them. You can probably make out the black tube that goes through it and you do have to actually bend it into shape, which may be a little more challenging for some people to be able to fit it correctly. It's this bend that allows this curve to actually be a thing. However, you also notice the light bluish gray curve slightly above it. That is not necessary really for the build. It's not structural by any means and it's just aesthetic and that is the one place of frustration that I did have in this build as it just didn't want to fit properly. While it obviously looks nice once in there and adds to the build, I wouldn't blame you at all if you left it out. One really interesting area of this build is the center orb. This is where the brain of the droid is. And as I learned over the last year, despite making instructions being a very easy thing to do now, making them properly and having certain techniques show up is difficult. What I mean is, this center orb, this dome piece here, isn't actually connected to anything and it's only held in by these tubes, but the instructions for that aren't really shown in the best way. I'm not going to blame them for this because they do at least tell you what to do, but it's not as clear as I would have liked it to be. Still, you can figure it out quite easily. This center section really uses a lot of unique pieces and a lot of pieces I've just never used before. One thing I do want to point out is that you do have these like Technic lift arms. You're supposed to have two of them, but I could never fit the second one in. Leaving the second one out made no difference to the structural integrity of this set or to any aspect of this set really. It works all the same. I don't know if that was something that should have been changed or if I just 
didn't figure it out. If we look at the underside of this build, you'll notice these two little pin holders here, and that's because you do actually get to build two missiles that connect underneath. This is the last part of the build that you make, and you can choose to put them on or not, depending on what your preferences are. I left them off just so it was easier to show you them now. When you're not trying to film a YouTube video, they're actually really easy to put on, so you'll watch me struggle, but it's actually incredibly, incredibly simple. Once you have both of them on, it does look really good, and of course you can keep adjusting them. One thing I wanted to mention and kind of forgot until right now is that you might have to adjust the curved areas in order for them to line up and be symmetrical. That's not a flaw with the build as much as it is just what happens when you handle it. I say all that because here you can clearly see that they are not symmetrical, but I want to make clear again that is not a defect of the build, that's just what happens when I was moving this around to film it. However, you can see the engines look really good here. They are pretty simple, but they do the job well. You might have noticed a piece falling off there, and it conveniently happens to be the one with the missile. Part of that is because these slopes are only connected using one stud, and part of that is because I'm not using the stand. I definitely need to start buying the stands for these things. If you do with your build, you probably won't have this issue. The only reason I don't is because they're two separate XML files and I always forget to combine them. Lastly, some things I wanted to point out that you might have noticed. There is this screwdriver on the top here and there are supposed to be screwdrivers on all three, but these two other ones are missing. That's just on me. I did actually have them, but I needed them for a separate project, so I just took them out, but yours will have them there. Also, this piece came out while I was filming, and I have no idea where it's supposed to go. I haven't noticed anything obviously missing, so if I ever figure it out, I'll put it back for right now. I have no idea. Let me know if you do. One thing that I want to start doing on these custom reviews is to end by giving a proper rating. I actually put a lot of thought into how I wanted to do this and the idea actually came from Jarek, the designer from Brick Vault. But what I'm going to do is look at three sections. First, what is the build like? Is it too challenging? Does it fall apart while you're building it? Is it easy? This will obviously keep in mind what kind of set I'm making. For instance, something being challenging won't instantly lose points. I'll also be looking at the instructions. How easy are they to follow? Are there any complicated or confusing areas? And third, I'll be looking at the final product. How does the build actually look once it's finally done? So in terms of how the build process actually was, I would have to give this an 8 out of 10. The level of challenge was just right enough but never too much, with the only frustrating part being that grey tube. And the set never really fell apart or anything, but it was a little repetitive just by the nature of this build. For the instructions, I will also be giving an 8 out of 10. The majority of the instructions were perfectly fine, with the exception of that center area that I talked about, but outside of there, there wasn't really any area that I didn't know what I was supposed to do or found boring or confusing. And finally, for the final build, I would have to give this thing a 10 out of 10. Sure, there are gaps in this build, but when you consider this was made using LEGO, they did as good of a job as they could. And unless you want this to be some overcomplicated monster, I'm fine with how it is. So that is an 8.6 out of 10 overall. Please do let me know your thoughts on it in the comments down below. Remember to check out the instructions at Brick Vault or the part kit at my website on the brick.fun. Another way you can support me is by liking, commenting, and subscribing, or of course by joining my Patreon. I would still really love to reach $100 a month on there and would appreciate it if you considered being a part of that. And then, if you do, you can join these awesome people on screen and get shoutouts like Jonathan and Project Elements and maybe other perks. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you next time.